Everything sinner in his old age. He's become so addicted to order, order, order. His anointing is disappearing. You're the man. You're the three musketeers here. You're the man. You're... If you let it get to your weak head. Church people can get you into trouble, man. You preach a message, say, what? Oof. This is the latest revelation in town. <laughs> and you too, get to your head and they say, you know, you are minister material. Go and open a church. We will follow you. <laughs> you and the devil. The devil will be your member. Those people, they know where their bread is buttered. When they are not getting what they want, they will return. And they will leave you alone there. So watch it. Don't believe what people say. Don't be deceived by empty words that come out of baby Christian's mouth. Or church folk. To make you think you are something you are not. Don't allow your ears to be a garbage can. Don't let them dump any kind of rubbish in your ears for you to listen to lies, gossip, backbiting, criticism of your leader. Remember what you sow is what you reap. He who sows the wind shall reap the inherit the well wind. One thing you should never tolerate is people come and talk to you about your leader. Don't give them room. Engage the mystery of the north wind. I have that record in Fountain of Life up to today. I'm, <laughs> I, will, I will size you now, now. Size you now, 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 right now. No, don't go there. He who sows the wind shall inherit the whirlwind. Always apply the principle of the north wind. Give people looks that they will never forget. Are you all here? Go and push your neighbor and say, give them the looks. Yeah, give them the looks. Don't, don't, don't entertain it. Don't entertain it. Give them looks that they will never forget when they speak against your pastor or your church. Now, when someone is about to speak against your pastor, you know how they speak. You know normally people speak normal. When somebody is going to say something that they shouldn't say, they speak in their, they speak in their, they speak in their, do you say what they say? Well, as soon as you say no, you know, uh, uh, you know hey, hey, stop the nose, Zam, hey. Stop it before it comes out of the mouth. You are liberty. You are defending your alma mater. Come on, say, I hear, sir. I hear, sir. We're talking about establishing a culture of undivided allies. Stop them in their track. Because you are helping them and helping your organization. That is why we all join to establish a culture of. It shouldn't be done by just a few. The man of God comes and says, This is what we are doing. Then the leaders must toe the line. This is what we are doing. Then the workers tow the line. Then the members tow the line. So every new person that comes, you know, this is an impenetrable organization. Amen. You can't penetrate it. That's what we do. Once a month, we do leaders training. And every week, we do training. Every week, every week, every week. Training, 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 training. Yeah, ongoing. Addictive. You can't stop it. Pastor Matthew said, first week in the every year, seven days, they all come to church. All workers, every lead, every day, seven days in a row. My spiritual father's one is that, that's worse. And that's why they are seeing amazing results. Training is ongoing. So you spend more time with your leaders than the congregation. The core group that you're going to build a thing with, you spend more time with them. Say amen. So always have, apply the principle of the North Wind. The church you belong to is your church, not the bishop's church, not the pastor's church. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Loyalty. Loyal people say we. Faithful people and ordinary people say they. Some say we. Us. Unfaithful people say them. Any pastor who attempts to do good and follow God's orders and instructions will encounter, listen, any leader, any pastor who decides to attempt to do and follow God's orders and instructions will encounter strong, passionate, sworn, demonic, and human enemies, believers and sinners alike. And never forget that your pastor's enemies and church's enemies are your enemies too on condition that you identify yourself as loyal and faithful to that church. Your pastor's enemies are your enemies if you believe that that is your church. 
Smite the shepherd. So smite your shepherd. Scatter you. From Mike Maddox's book, my personal dream book, we discovered that people would be assigned by hell to distract, delay, discourage, and derail your assignment. And one thing you should never forget is that throughout your life, your association with your leader and your ministry and your church will have enemies, but according to God's infallible and unchanging word, no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. But he said they shall rise against you. So if they rise against your pastor, they are rising against you. So don't sit down. When things hit a church, that's when you know those who are for the church and those who are not. When crisis hits, that's when you know those who have been praising him in the good time. That when the battle, I guess, I can't go through this. There are some battles we don't have to fight. God promises to fight those battles for us. Like he said to Jehoshaphat, you don't need to fight in this battle. Amen? Now, remember that eventually the sworn enemies of any God-ordained pastor or church will be cut off. So if you go with them, <laughs> you'll be cut off with them. Very often when an animal will bite you, it will bite you from your cloth. That's an African proverb. When an, an ant or insect will bite you, it doesn't bite you from outside. It bites you from within. A man's enemies shall be of his own house. So when God is cutting them off, he cut those people off as well. So when you join them, you suffer with them. Psalm 55, 12 to 15 says, It was not an enemy from outside that reproached me. So if it was so, I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me, that magnified himself against me. But it was you, a man my equal, my own guide, my own acquaintance, my trusted friend. So watch it. Amen. Number what? Number eight. Prune constantly. Prune. Prune. You know prune? Prune constantly. To have a culture of loyalty, we must constantly prune out these loyal elements that find their way into our midst. So when you see anything that is not helping the flock, you must deal with it quickly. If you see people going wayward, people are not tithing, you need to call them into, to, to book quickly. Don't be afraid of your leaders. They are your children. They are part of your children. You have a response. If they don't tithe, you are not, they are not hurting the organization. They are hurting themselves. Because very soon they'll be coming to you with all kinds of diseases that are catching them. And you can't do anything about their diseases. So it's more for their benefits than the church's benefits. Their money is not helping the church. It's helping them. Their tithing is not helping the church. Their tithing is helping them. Because if they don't tithe, the windows of heaven will not be open. And very soon the devourer will hit them with certain things. And they will come to you to have to pray additional supernatural prayer. Which is nonsense. So they should tithe. So they don't have to come to you to pray zagu zagu gara. Those prayers are not needed if they will tithe. So occasionally you need to check all your leaders' records. Are they tithing or not? Are they giving or not? When you're having an occasion, watch your leaders, whether they give or they don't give. Say a loud amen. So it's part of the culture. Prune. To have a culture of loyalty, we must constantly prune out these loyal elements. Maybe they, have, they didn't start that way. They've, they've started associating with some kinds of people and they are being poisoned. Say amen. I believe that no one should stay on in a church when he or she does not want to. I've discovered that if anyone indicates his desire to resign, it's best for such a person not to stay on but to leave immediately. Once they open their mouth to say, I want to go, say, go with yesterday. I encourage thee to go with yesterday. Once out of the abundance of the man's heart, he speaks. So once it's come out of the mouth, their heart is gone. So release them quickly. Bishop Ducky Ward Mill says, remove these loyal people quickly. He said, I learned this personally the hard way. Well, I, I, you know, I, we've had our fair share of it. So I will just settle there. 
We've gone beyond it now. Some pastors are so soft that they do not remove openly rebellious elements. How can you retain someone who has really something positive to say about your church? How can you keep him in the system when he has barely anything positive to say about your church or you? We should not allow any leader or member to pollute God's precious sheep, precious sheep whose destinies have been entrusted to us as pastors to feed. They must leave yesterday in my book. They must leave when? Yesterday. They must leave when? Absalom corrupted and destroyed many people's destinies by his rebellious acts. 